What's up, y'all? I'm gonna show my Cold Steel folding collection thus far. I got two new ones today. Super excited. Uh, so, let's start. Smallest to largest. First, I've had this one a while. This is the Cold Steel Con. It's a really nice little thing. Uh, that was a terrible attempt at a flip, but anyway. Um, it came uh, razor sharp, as they all do. Aus 8A Steel, Taiwan. Uh, it's got G10 scales, triad lock, really a nice, nice little piece, metal pocket clip. Um, this came to me as a freebie through, uh, I made a large purchase on the Cold Steel website of a um, long sword, and, or a hand and a half sword, I guess it's called. And uh, it, but that sword is incredible, by the way. Uh, I want to do a sword video at some point, but anyway. This came as a freebie along with it. Now back then, these were on sale for about 25 bucks. Right now, you can find them for about 40 bucks. I guess they went up, maybe they got um, discontinued and now they're harder to find or something like that. I'm not sure exactly, but anyway. Con, nice little American Tanto style blade. Uh, and it's uh, got more of an uh, angle on it, obviously, than your typical Tanto. So, one of the ones that I got today, a new one, is the Voyager Cold Steel. Ooh, uh, <laughs> I'm not quite used to it yet, but I just got it. I just pulled it out of the box. Here's the box, by the way. Voyager XL, blade length 5.5, Austin A steel, 7.7 .7 ounces, 4 millimeter blade width. Look at that. That's a fat blade throughout most of the length there. That's, that's really cool. It means that blade is going to retain lots of strength all the way through the tip. Uh, and the handle's a six and three quarter inch Griv X. Now it's interesting, the handle, it has the, the, the grip uh, texture is kind of like little Templar crosses, but you don't really notice that until you get it in your hand and look really closely. I don't know if that will focus on it or not. I'm going to leave it here for a second and hope that it focuses, but they look like little Templar crosses. That's interesting. Now, I was delighted when I pulled this out and realized actually how large this blade is. I was expecting a five inch blade. I guess I, what I didn't realize is how this width was going to be a substantial width and this thickness was going to be such a solid looking thickness and all the way through this triad lock as well. It has aluminum um, plates on the inside of the scales for added stability or strength in the handle. It's got a little metal pocket clip. Uh, personally, I prefer plastic pocket clips so they don't tear the upholstery on your vehicle if you happen to be wearing them in your back pocket. But I believe this is gonna be my EDC for a little while and I just carry it in a front pocket so that I don't tear the upholstery in my vehicle. But uh, that is one advantage of plastic clips as opposed to metal clips. And you know, of course, if you break the plastic clip, uh, Cold Steel will send you a new one. That's the type of clip uh, that we're talking about here, a plastic one, and, and when they break, they'll, they'll replace them for you. This thing also, like always, from Cold Steel came absolutely razor sharp. Just a really cool knife. I'm going to really enjoy playing with this knife. It's got great balance. As you can see, my knife flip um, attempts with this blade are significantly better than the little guy there. Um, I think the little one just didn't quite have the front weight to allow it to be easily twirled. Now, there's no no earthly use for twirling them. It's just kind of a little fun thing I like to do. That's that's the only reason I do that. I know there's absolutely no reason to do it. Anyway, so that's the Voyager Tanto from Cold Steel. Really cool blade. I'm super excited about carrying that one and getting to test it out. So, one that I already had was the Cold Steel Luzon. Obviously, a slightly longer blade there than the Voyager. Um, it's a slightly lesser steel, 8CR13MOV China. Um, so, stainless steel. It's got this extra lock here, which helps uh, lock this. As you can see, it, I don't know if you can see down in that groove, but this kind of uh, makes it to where this can't come back over. A little bit of uh, extra hand security there, obviously. This does have, um, I'm assuming it's probably aluminum um, on the inside of the scales. 
uh, once again, like like all of these, they they place some type of uh, metal plating along the inside, and then they coat the outside, uh, you know, with with a more plastic-like material um, or some derivative of that. Uh, by the way, I'm not an expert, guys. I just uh, I, I'm just an amateur knife collector. I I enjoy doing these little videos, but uh, don't don't uh, don't hold me to this information too hard. I just uh, all I know is what I read, and uh, I don't retain all of it. So you know, I do like about this Luzon the fact that this has kind of a cross guard situation here, and that's really cool because you can flip it out. You can also pocket deploy from here. When you yank it out of your pocket, it can deploy really fast, and uh, and then you can lock it. And uh, and this also acts as a guard for your hand. You know, if if it were to be pulled uh, or anything like that, you'd, you'd have a good grip there. You also have kind of a bulbous end down here that if you want extra reach, it's a little more difficult to pull out of your hand this way. This is a Filipino-inspired bamboo-style looking handle. Um, that's what they say anyway. I, I don't think I would have ever known that if I hadn't read the description because you just you wouldn't guess that bamboo was what they were going for there. But uh, but anyway, pretty cool piece. I do actually carry this EDC sometimes as it is not actually that bad in the pocket. Um, it's actually pretty light and uh, not quite as easy to uh, on the balance as this guy. Uh, I mean, that, that's just like perfect. It's just so easy to handle. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, but anyway, this was uh, 55 or so when I bought this one. It was around 60 bucks. Um, so that's where we are on the prices. The other new one that I got today, uh, Raja 2. Now this, uh, it doesn't have a, a, a quick deployment on the back. It has a quick deployment here. This is uh, your typical uh, pop, uh, pocket deployment method. You snag that on your pocket and it pulls it right out. And... Uh, Oh, 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 I can't quite, there it goes. <sighs> yeah, they're a little stiff right when they come out of the box. And by the way, I did just take this out of the box. Here's the box. Uh, let's see, Raja 2 Cold Steel, anytime, anywhere. Blade length, 6 inches, Aus 10A steel, 13.4 ounces. This is heavy, y'all. This is heavy compared to these guys. Thickness, 4.8 millimeter. Handle, Griv X. Okay? So, 4.8 millimeter means this blade is thicker than that one. Look, you can see the difference. This is almost 5 millimeter thickness. Uh, obviously, you can see the difference. That thickness tapers down towards the end. But I also noticed this doesn't have uh, your typical hollow grind. It's, uh, I think, what's called a straight grind, as in it tapers all the way from the top down. And I think that's for added strength, basically. You don't have kind of a weaker, thinner area. Um, or uh, I'm assuming that's what that means. Triad lock, obviously. This abrasive material really makes it good in the hand. You, you know, you get a really good grip on it. You got grip options. You got your uh, intricate work up front. You got your uh, more of a guarded um, grip here. Makes it uh, difficult for it to slide this way on accident and get yourself cut. Or if you want maximum reach for chopping, uh, you got this group, this grip down here where you've got kind of your typical thing that Colt still does with their tips. He did, uh, Lynn Thompson says all the time that, you, that he thinks a lot about uh, his customers not cutting their hand. And I think that the way they design their grips is uh, reflecting that. Uh, because you, you really do, with cold steel, you get really good grips. Um, really hard to lose control of them. This is a brand new one today, so I'm super excited about this one. This one runs about 90 bucks. And as a side note, I have a cold steel Kukri machete. And it is the best chopping tool I have ever had. Now, I've got, I've got an axe, I've got hatchets. Um, but I'm telling you, that cold steel Kukri... Uh, machete. That is the tool that I carry in my woods every day. I've got about five acres here. We've got trails that we continuously have to clear 
uh, of, of thorns and vines and all kinds of things. And that kukri machete is the best chopping, trail clearing, woods cutting tool that I have ever found. And I've tried many uh, buoys. I've tried many uh, uh, various other knife uh, styles and machete styles. And that kukri machete is the best machete I've ever owned by far. And it's a carbon steel blade, but it... Um, when I hit something on accident, like a steel pole in a fence, when I'm trying to clear vines off the fence or whatever, uh, it, yes, it can uh, create a roll on the blade, but I just go to my whetstone and my sharpening tools and I, I uh, get that, that roll right out of there and go right back out and it is just as good as ever. That thing has yet to let me down. So I was super excited to get a folding kukri from Cold Steel and test it out because I think this is going to turn out to be my new uh, everyday carry for my own woods, obviously. I want to carry this in my woods and use it for chopping purposes and see how it stacks up to the full-size um, cold steel kukri machete. So, anyway, this is going to be really fun. And finally, we've got the king of folders. This really is, if, if you ask me, the king of folding knives. Now, whoop, I've totally screwed that one up. Sometimes I'm better at it, but this one's a little heavier than these other guys. But still, excellent balance. As you can see, you can balance it right there. Perfect, perfectly right below uh, the hilt if it, if it had one. I don't know if you'd still call it a hilt on a folder, but anyway, you know what I mean. It's got the pocket uh, deployment. It's got the triad lock. I've seen them hang 600 pounds off of this knife, and the triad lock didn't break, obviously. G10 handle. It's got it's a, kind of an abrasive um, uh, grip. Uh, lots of different grip options on this guy. You've got tons of reach, like pistol grip reach, like this. You've got kind of an up close, more up close. Uh, you know, I guess if you want to, you could, you know, do your intricate work up closer like this. This is really an excellent piece. The only reason I don't take this in the woods and use it is because I like it too much. And that's really one of the <laughs> it's one of the problems when you buy, or for me anyway, when I buy a high dollar cold steel knife like this, I don't I don't want to mess it up, you know. Um, I I kind of want to keep it pristine because I'm more than a I'm not a knife expert. I'm just a collector. I just like to collect these, and I really enjoy uh, the designs. I really enjoy the, as the technology advances, I enjoy seeing what happens with that. I'm really enjoying the subject just in general. I like to study the subject, but I am not any kind of an expert. Uh, with this, uh, I just don't want to waste the nearly 200 bucks that I spent on it by tearing it up. Uh, because this actually is one of my everyday carries, sometimes. I mean, I, there's a lot of situations I would not carry this because, I mean, it is just enormous. The total length is like 17 inches. You know, I mean, that that's a, that's a short sword in your pocket, basically. You know, I mean, and I'm sure this would be an absolutely excellent chopper. I've seen the videos. I'm sure you've seen them too. And it's an incredible knife. I just like to keep it pristine. I don't want to go banging that blade on anything that... Uh, damages it or uh, reduces its sharpness or or anything like that but uh, that's really just because it's basically one of my favorites and I just want to keep it that way but on this guy prepare for abuse I am going to try this dude out I'm gonna really try this guy out and I'm gonna really carry this one around because um, I, I'm just really enjoying that blade style really enjoying just the the uh, the look of it and the feel of it. So anyway, that's my cold steel um, folding knife collection. Uh, I just like to share these things just for fun because um, I've heard before, uh, happiness isn't real unless it's shared. And for some reason, I do happen to agree that I do get more of a kick out of these items when I share them with people and share uh, what I've discovered and learned about them. And uh, I hope you enjoy something about what I do here. Um, I know I've had some comments lately uh, about, you know, do field tests. I know, I know, I know. I'm just reluctant to destroy these things. Now, I understand they're super tough. I'm probably not going to be able to destroy them unless I really try. 
but I am going to field test that kukri. I'm going to field test it um, harshly and give it a few weeks, and I'll come back with a video to show you what has happened when I have spent a few weeks chopping in the woods with it, clearing trails and stuff like that. I'll even try to get a little bit of footage of actual use and uh, see if we can uh, make a video of that nature. But uh, anyway, for now, uh, signing off. Thank you for watching. Hope you gathered some good information and enjoyed something about the video. Have a good one.